Hello my friends and welcome, welcome back. Ah, yesterday was a little break, took a day off. It was my youngest daughter 15 year birthday. So uh, yeah, I told her daddy would take a break and we went out and ate way too much food. Yeah, so I'm back today. So two things has occurred. One was my daughter's birthday and the other was your boy just hit 150, actually it's now 150, 1,000 subscribers two days ago. Yeah. Hey, we're there, guys. We're getting there. My goal is to the 250 mark. So we got another 100,000 to go. Come on. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please hit that subscription button so I can hit that 250. The idea is I want to do this full time. I think the magic number where I could generate enough income is where I'm getting enough ad revenue coming in from YouTube at 250,000 subscribers. I could. I could get by with it now, but I still have to hit and miss, you know, I still have to hedge my bets with, you know, my other jobs that I have coming as well. But thank you guys so much. Really feel a lot of love right now hitting that 150. Took me a year and four months, but I am extremely, extremely happy, proud of myself. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of course, with your guys' help, you know, but that I'm here. So one of the goals I set for myself was when I hit 150, I will start talking to people personally and putting it out on air. So with that said, I'm going to start soft. This was a young lady that sent me a message via Instagram, and I got her permission to actually share the conversation with you guys. I'm going to respond to her voice messages. Uh, the avatar that I have here isn't her picture. This is a picture that I generated on AI so that I do not disclose any of her information. I, I make sure that I hide her identity. Listen, guys, you can easily send me a voice message over on Instagram. This is one of the advantages. If you would like me to mention your case on air and get feedback, because that's what I'm going to be doing, is not only giving my feedback, but after this particular episode has aired, then I will go back and I will get other people's opinion and respond to those opinions opinions as well so that we get some sort of interaction. This will eventually build up to me having live call-ins, almost like what Mr. Kevin Samuels used to do. I would like to get to that point when I reach around 200,000 subscribers. So we got another 50,000 to go. All right. So you know what to do. You know what to do. Subscribe, turn on the notification bell. All right. So let me give you some context to this conversation. This is a single divorcee one child, right? She's African, not African-American. She is African, African out of Nigeria. And uh, she sent me a message a couple, I guess about a month and a half ago. You know, she was just asking me some advice on why she's not getting any love, why she's not having any success on dating sites and, and so on. She listens to all of my videos. And of course, my primary message is that you have to be fit friendly, feminine, agreeable, childless. And of course, she's been evaluating herself and seeing where she is as far as those five things are concerned. Now, she cannot change the childless part. She has a child with her ex-husband. So the other four she has to focus on. So what I want to bring you guys and I want to highlight in this video is how she, this woman is approaching her life because I want other black women to identify that, hey, this is how this woman is doing it. I should look at how she's doing it and maybe I need to make changes as well. But you know what? I want to get straight into the conversation because I'm going to give you guys feedback and advice along the way of this conversation. All right. So let's let's get into it. Good morning, Paul. Thank you so much for the constructive feedback. I thought as much I'm the problem, but I just didn't know which aspects that requires fixing. So I received your voice notes over three weeks ago and I have played it over time, countless number of time. And I should have responded, but I just didn't have a proper response because I wanted to sit back and do 
a proper analysis, a self-evaluation and see where I'm at fault and what I need to work on. You see, you see that? Ladies, she wanted to focus on what she needed to work on. That is called accountability. She's taking responsibility and she's becoming accountable for whatever flaws she thinks she has. If a man is pointing out the problems to her based on what she's told me, then she now has to analyze whether that's true or not and then make adjustments. That's how this shit works. It's not rocket science. Before last week, I usually get this feedback from, you know, people around me that I have this demeanor of someone who is unapproachable. But then when they come close to me, they realize that I'm friendly. I'm actually approachable. I'm actually nice. I'm actually, you know, cool to be with. I'm actually someone that you can have in your corner that will be loyal to you and trustworthy. That's when they come close to me. That's when they find out all this thing. So here's the issue with the problem that a lot of women have appearance is everything people say oh don't judge a book by the cover but if the cover looks like shit why would i waste my time looking inside most people know that hey the cover is what will attract people so if the cover you look miserable my automatic assumption is you're a miserable woman if i look at you and you scowl you don't smile because we know how black women take this idea. Oh, why do I have to smile? I, I, it blows my mind. I don't know where this came from. If any of you know this origin on why black women think that they should stop smiling, please let me know. Let me know because I don't see it from any other culture. Because only black women are the only group of women I've ever heard to get offended when someone says smile. You know, I heard a black woman who's a femininity influencer who's talking to black women who said they want to be more feminine, who said they want to be get husbands. And this black woman on her Facebook page just went and asked her black clients, her, her black followers, hey, just smile at every black man you see today. And they tore that woman apart for months. Think about how low of a bar you're talking about. That man didn't ask you to go have sex with him do any sexual favor, give him some money. He just said, smile, and you find it offensive? Huh, wow. Okay, so she's saying, hey, I've identified that this is an issue. I have been asking over time, just sampling random opinion before I reached out to you. And I asked, oh, how can I change this, you know, demeanor? How can I change this perception that people have that is so wrong? Yes, I know I put up a front, and I do that because of self-preservation i do that because um i'm just trying to protect myself from devourers and sometimes i wonder i ask myself is it necessary to actually put up a front do you always feel like someone is going to attack you or somebody's going to take advantage of you and then i look down my childhood that's why i ask where did this come from that you should not be friendly. Why is it that women think that they have to put up a front to keep men away from them? And then you complain when the men stay away from you. Please make that make sense. And she says, I'm putting up a mask, a front. It's not even her. So you walk around not even being your own self. You're hiding from your own self. Imagine the stress you have to go through every day to do that. Imagine that, just not being myself. Wow. That 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 blows my mind. So for some reason, women have this opinion that they cannot be themselves and they have to be mean and nasty in order to appear approachable. Because it's like, why is it such a, a demand for, for women to, well, especially for black women to just always look a certain way? Like, why can't we just naturally be whatever we feel? You got, so, so. I want to be, I want to get this clear. Someone just says, Hey, smile. And it's offensive to you. I mean, for the most part, it just comes across as like demanding. And I'm not saying demanding. that I feel, yes. Huh? Like, what if I don't feel like smiling? What if I'm in deep thought? What if I'm, what if I'm listening to something? That's this is where, this is where, this is where we're at. This is where we're at. This is where we're at. We have civilized the world and done such a good job in first world countries to where women, in this case, black women, are offended just to be asked to smile. 
It's offensive. Doesn't come off as a question of asking or requesting. It's almost a demand. Smile, beautiful. <laughs> like, can I just relax? Can you relax? And what's the re what's your relaxed face look like? Rest and bitch face? Not necessarily, but sometimes it's just it's just. Well, how about if this? How about this? How about if no one said a damn thing to you? What if every man just left you to fuck alone? Excuse my friends. What if every man just left you alone? What if, nobody, what if no black man said anything to you? Just ignored you. Would that be better? I, no, I'd be really sad. Honestly. Oh. Ah, oh, fuck. I, 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 I don't know. Make, make it, make it make sense, please. Somebody, make it make sense. Fit, friendly, 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 feminine, agreeable. Those. But if you cannot look friendly, no one is gonna approach you. No one wants to be around a miserable-looking person. You, come with me. I have a surprise for you. Are you ready for it? Yes. Okay, this is for you. Wait. Yeah. No, no. No. Before you tell me that, no, so goodbye. Why? Have a good night. Thank have a good you night. so much. Be kind. Be kind. Be kind. No man wants to get shut down by some miserable looking. Ah, leave me now. What are you coming up to me for? I'll tell you, for the last three weeks, what I have been doing is going around my gym, approaching random women, and I, I'm trying to approach a different selection of women. So far, I have approached 11 women and just said these simple words. Hi, excuse me, sorry to disturb you. Can I ask you a simple question quickly? Most of them take off their headphones because 90% of women wear headphones in the gym. Guys as well. Men are not the ones walking around with a sour face. Practically every one of the women have that sour face. I don't care. So what I do is I ask that same question to every single one of them. So I look for certain type of women, right? Women that look single, women that are fit. I do not approach overweight women. Why? Because those are the women that men wouldn't approach, period, anyway. The majority of men just wouldn't approach uh, heavy set women. They, just, they never do. I am constantly analyzing the women and men in the gym, the, the interaction between this, the genders. Men rarely, rarely, and I mean. So here are the results of that survey that I'm doing, right? Hi, miss, may I ask you a quick question? Sorry to bother you. Two women went, yeah, sure, two out of the 11. Six of them said, yeah, sure, no problem. Sure, how can, what's up? Two said, yes, what? Okay, and three of them just went, and smile, no words, right? And then when I ask these words, if a guy came up to you and said, I just think you're absolutely beautiful. I'm not flirting with you, but I just want you to know that today. What would you say to that man? Every one of them smiled except one. The look of joy that came over their face just went. <coughs> All of them just smile. One girl just went, uh, I, I, don't, I don't know what I would say. And the responses, this is the important part. Nine of them said, thank you. I would just say, thank you so much. I appreciate that. One said, I would say nothing. That was a young girl. And one of them said, I don't know what I would say. I don't know what I would say. In that, I don't know what I would say. I followed that up and I said, why would you say that? And she said, I don't know. I don't, I don't think I would believe them. Now, this girl was great shape, but she had enhanced lips and she had, I can see she had some adornment some things and she wasn't bad looking it's just that i could see that she was struggling and she said she told me she said i i have insecurity issues she said i just don't know if i would believe the guy when he told me that and i would always just looking for what else does he want from me why is he here but the majority of the women said thank you i appreciate that oh that's so nice oh you're so sweet oh that's so sweet to say yeah the American black woman that I did interview, she was really nice. She said, oh, thanks. That's, that's such a nice thing to say. I really appreciate that. And I said, man, you know what? I'm, I am pleasantly surprised that you responded to me like that. And she's like, why you say that? And I said, you're American. Yeah. And she said, yeah. yeah. And um, we had this great conversation. But she's 38. Um, she's over here working as a teacher. But the point is, is that she's not having any success here, 
So she's going back to the U.S. But that's a whole other long story. What we're talking about and what I want you guys to focus on is how women respond to when men address them. Are they friendly? Because the majority of women have this idea that they should not be friendly. And that's what this woman is suffering from. And she now realizes that that's what she needs to focus on. I'm sorry that took a while to get there, but we're going to get back to her now. But I want you guys to understand and especially the ladies that I do have watching me, that being friendly is essential. And so let's get back to her conversation. Now, I think she's 29 or 30. I'm not sure, but she's, I think she might tell us in here. Memory Lane, did I ever at any point in time on, undergo some sort of trauma that has necessitated me to grow up, you know, sort of demeanor? And I can't seem to place it. I had a beautiful childhood. My father was very much, you know, present in my life. My mom and my dad had a very good marriage. And he was there for me, you know. We, he, he takes me to school. After school, I, I go to his office. He was a, a lecturer at the University of Lagos. And the university had a primary school. So he was very much involved in my academics. He was there nurturing us, you know, um, educating us, spending time with us, teaching us things, teaching us things about life, value, savings culture, what is important about life, what we should focus our energy on, what is not important, things that can get us carried away. And, you know, when push comes to shove, when you are in your um, when you are much older, then you realize all the time that you have wasted. You know, things that are important that you talk a lot about in your video. Yes, I had that kind of father and I had that kind of mother. They were both corroborating and they were also disciplinarians, you know. Yeah, so I just keep asking myself, um, how, where did I learn to do that? Where did I learn to not be welcoming you know to have that appearance of someone who is not welcoming but then when you come closer you just realize that oh my god she's she got that from university she got that from the virus of feminism that has pushed itself across the globe that's where she got it from and it's unfortunate because it's infecting a lot of cities and universities around the world that's where she got it from. She don't even know that she was influenced by these things. And this is what you ladies got to understand. You have no idea how much you're being influenced by mainstream media. And it's not just in the, in the, in the West, man. These companies are multinational. They're all over the world. Keep people apart. Keep women single. Keep them fearful. They will spend more money. It's a very, very effective technique. Sorry to see it happening, man. I saw a colleague of mine who has this, you know, um, nice quality traits that I love and people around me, my colleagues would refer to her as a sweet lady. Oh, Onye is a sweet lady. So I, I, that, you know, those two words kept on, you know, um, bringing in my subconscious sweet lady. Why can't I be called a sweet lady? Does it mean that I'm not feminine? And then, and then last week, you know, we both arrived at work at the same time. Her husband, her, her husband had dropped her off. She's sweet and she's married. You get it, gentlemen? You get it, ladies? The reason why she's married is because she's sweet. She's feminine. She's friendly. I don't know about the fit because I don't know her. She's not describing what she looks like. But she's, she's describing the results this woman is getting. Let's continue. And then I asked, oh, is that your husband? And she said, oh, yes. And then while we were walking into the building, I observed, I observed and noticed how she would greet the security men. She would even go as far as asking them for their names. You know, I greet on a normal day, but I don't take it personal to start asking, oh, what's your name? Just in case uh, maybe, um, I think she has observed that maybe one or two of them might be new and maybe a face that she has not seen. So she takes that extra extra uh, makes that extra effort to ask for their name you know i just for me i just greet them you know smile and then go about my normal business you know i just put up that front of not wanting anybody to come uh, unnecessarily too close to me why i do that still today i have not been able to answer that question 
You see what I'm talking about, ladies. She talks to the security guard like he's a human being. She knows that that man is there to guard her and protect her. She shows the utmost amount of respect to the lowly security guard. He knows he's not the white collar man. They work in a white collar job. They work in the banking industry. But you know what? Her friend respects the security guard. That's what you got to understand. The woman respects men. And in return, those men will not have a problem protecting her. Respect. Be nice. Be respectful. That is what makes you feminine. Or maybe I'm just living in, in denial. Or maybe I know the answers and, I, and, and I'm just... And I just don't want to, you know, come to terms with it. So, so what I observed, you know, after I'd seen that, you know, I decided to put that into practice. Like it, it kind of like really open. Um, it kind of like really open, uh, or I would say it, it struck a core in me. And I said, okay, maybe that's what you just need to do, and that uh, mask you're wearing will fall off. And then I did put it into practice for like two days, and I noticed, you know, a change. In, in the way um, people related to me the change wasn't um, so much of a drastic change but just you know a little change because I it's two days come on how much change you're gonna expect in two days it's two days <laughs> give it six months you'll see big huge changes in your life just being nice to people being civil you know that's it you know one of the things i i, I tell women i said you know one of the best ways to meet a man is, is to be referred to him or to have a man be referred to you by another friend. The referral system is based on, hey, another person sees the goodness in that person and they feel that, hey, I'm going to introduce him to you. I'm married, for example, but I am constantly keeping my eye out for eligible mates for other single friends of mine, whether they're male or female. If I see that you're an asshole, how the hell can I refer you to somebody else? You think I'm going to set up an asshole with an, a nice person? And how do you think that affects me? That person that I referred the person to will never trust me anymore. They will never trust my judgment. And this isn't just me. This is something that happens to all of us as human beings. Your auntie would refer you to the kid down the road that has a good job, working hard, honest person that never steals, never lies, always polite. That's just how this world works. Because I think that gave a, a young man on my floor, we're not in the same team, a big floor made up of different teams. And it's so big that you cannot know everybody on that floor. So you could know the people um, sitting opposite to, opposite to you. You could know all the faces, and then you could know some of the faces sitting on the other side. But you couldn't possibly know all the whole faces, except maybe uh, you are that intentional person that takes it another level to make sure that you know everyone on the floor. So he sits very close to the door, far, far away from you know where my team sits, and then one faithful day i was going to take a quick uh, make a quick dash to the bank to make some transfers and i just noticed that someone followed me and i was like oh i've been trying to you know talk to you i, I noticed you a couple of months back or so in the lunch room whenever you're in the lunch room you you, you the way you sit you sit differently from the other people you back the window so we have this view um in that has this big window view where you can actually see you can actually see all your environment and because it's so high up in the sky the, the, my floor is so high up in the sky i tend to like you know back the window and like people tend to when people sit they face the window but i back the window and he just said he's just been trying looking for an opportunity to speak to me but he just doesn't know if it was a welcoming idea and as he saw me you know leaving the office using the back elevator at the end he was also leaving so he decided to you know give it a try and i'm like oh okay um could it be because i started to drop some of the marks is that what's making people giving them the courage to be able to you know approach me up front i don't know yes that's exactly what it is Somebody realized, oh, she's actually nice. Look, she's talking to somebody else. Oh, she's smiling. Oh, wow. Okay, let me let me not be so scared to approach her. Let me make my move, you know? And hey, there's your opportunity. But women think, oh, if I just shut down and look miserable, 
only the brave one's gonna come to me and I can filter out all the all the dead beats and all the guys that don't don't push. Don't he's not a man if he don't push and and fight for me. No, dear. There's only two guys that are gonna come for you. Those are the confident players. These guys got a lot of practice approaching women, okay? And they are not the men that are married material. They're not there for long-term prospects. The hardworking guys, a lot of them don't have female skills. They don't They don't have game. They got the money, but they, a lot of them don't have the frame in the game, man. They don't. Those are the guys that will approach you less. Your average dude, he don't get a lot of play. He's not going to have the skills. So you have to understand how men operate and the type of men you want are not the men that are going to approach you if you look miserable you have to give them an opening but um fit as a woman and feminine i dress well i look good i smell nice friendly yeah that part needs a lot of work needs a lot of work uh, damn it and i'm agreeable i think out of a hundred percent i'm 85 percent agreeable I know when to fight a battle, I know when not to fight a battle, I know when to, you know, give respect, I know when not to disrespect, I know when to keep quiet, I know when not to drag an issue, you know. Yeah. Again, I, I want to say thank you so much for all the videos, all the video reviews, all the interesting topics that you put together. I don't miss any single one of them. I listen to them on my way to work. Or when I'm heading back home, you know, I just plug my ears and then try to catch up, download the ones that I may have missed and then listen up. It's really pretty quite interesting and then I, I, I don't want to, you know, dwell so much on regrets. I wish I knew a lot of things like this. In this part, I didn't have my parents telling me that in your 20s, that's when you're supposed to, you know, start looking out for who you want to settle down with. There was nothing like that. Maybe because I won't blame my mom, I take responsibility. I won't, maybe because I lost my father by then, because I lost my father at the age of 16. That was when I was um, about getting admission into the university. And throughout my university years, my father was. And that happened because I no longer had a father figure at that point in my life. What? It is well. It is well. Wow. That's the end of it. Thank you so much for listening to my videos. I really, really appreciate that. So guys, you can see where this problem occurred. She lost the father at the most crucial part of her becoming an adult, a woman. The father was not there to teach her a lot of the essential things about life on becoming a woman. It's difficult to teach a girl a lot of the female womanly things it usually should start around 15 16 17. now i started on my daughter at 14 15 because i realize i want to get them as young as possible before they screw up because we know that a lot of these younger generation they're having sex and getting crazy anywhere between 14 and 15 years old well below adult age so i want to make sure that i get the all of this information in their heads young so i can see where the seeds of feminism were planted when she went to university and then she didn't have a father to counteract that that's where the problem went guys i'm telling you parents out there make sure that you're teaching your daughters especially the daughters the correct hardcore real lessons of life while they're going to college more than likely uh, before they hit college, before they hit college. And even while they're in college, you got to keep in touch with them to keep their brains right. Because the programming that occurs in college, whoo, man, I saw it happening to both of my sisters that went off to America to college from the Cayman Islands. Wow. Yeah. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this little segment. If you would like me to talk or to review any of your issues on air, let me know. If you want to have a conversation with me on air, I'm going to start doing that right now. So all you have to do, pop me a message either at paul at askanolderman.com or just send me a, a message over on Instagram at askanolderman. All right. So guys, thank you so much for hanging in there with this little segment. 
Let me know if you enjoyed this and if you want to listen to more of these. I know this one was a little longer, but I'm going to try to I'll try to edit out as much of the fluff as I can. All right. <laughs> so until next time, remember, whenever in doubt, always, always ask an older man. See you soon. Cheers.